everybody to another great episode of Real Life Matters. And of course, I'm your host, The Boss. And um, we'll be giving some tips over the last um, few episodes about laughing. Laughing is a way of life and laughing is good for your health. So, you know, some people don't realize it, but, you know, to laugh, some people find it hard to, to laugh. So, you know, you don't want to have those wrinkles in your face and all that stuff. We want to, you want to have smooth longevity. You want to release those endomorphins in your body and also can help tone your abs. Yes, people, um, laughing can tone your abs and you should laugh every day. It lowers your blood pressure. It helps your body heal. If you're sick, laugh it off, laugh it, you know, so because it help, it heals you, you know, and a lot of people haven't been doing that. So I'm just encouraging people, you know, do something every day. It doesn't matter matter yourself doing whatever you're doing you could just turn on uh, have a sitcom you could just start laughing so that you just release those tension the stress or just call somebody and maybe just start laughing with them and then you you, you did your laugh for the day and you're going to feel more healthy but anyways today we got um i got two special ladies on and we got a great organization that's coming um that's here and it's the um canadian alliance of film and television Costume Art and Design, which is a laugh, which is a lot of words there, but anyways, it's CAFCAD for short, C-A-F-T-C-A-D. So um, we're gonna find out what they're doing. You know, if they're they're doing a lot of stuff, it's their fifth um, annual uh, gala, and they're gonna be having that very shortly. So we're gonna talk to these people and find out what their organization does. That it's, so if you don't know what they do, we're gonna find out what they do now. So with no other further ado, I introduce to you, Allison Hi. Swanson. Alisa Swanson. <laughs> Alisa, sorry. Alisa Swanson and Joanne. Oh my gosh, here we go. Siracoma. Siracoma. <laughs> well, my last name is Bostic. Bostic, Bostic, Bostic. <laughs> so I should be able to. But welcome, welcome. Welcome you guys here today. Thank you for having us. It's such thank a pleasure. You. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I, you know, we're hearing a lot about you guys and, you know, a lot of people probably who don't know what you guys do. So maybe one, maybe um, Elisa can take one part of it, what you do, and then uh, Joanna can take the other part. So we'll kind of, uh, you know, just tell everybody a little bit. Certainly. I'll start. Um, I'm actually the vice president of CAFCAD at the moment. Okay. Don't mind the voice. I have a cold. <laughs> um, and <laughs> We're a fantastic organization that is across Canada, and we actually have members that are not even Canadian, some that are American, some that are from the UK, some that are from uh, South Korea, who are all part of the costuming community of film and television. And so we offer courses for people specifically designed towards film and television costuming and the different um, parts of costuming that you can do within that industry. And we have a Google groups and members that can get together and can discuss sources, can discuss um, different techniques on how we do things so that we can communicate with each other across the country to make ourselves stronger and better at what we do. And it just sort of gives us a home place. There have been lots of places before for people who are in theater where they could get together and talk about different techniques and styles and, and learn courses. But costuming for film and television can be very specific at times. And so it is nice to have a centralized sort of organization affiliation where we can chat amongst ourselves. We are not a union in any way. We don't find jobs for people. We are purely a place where you can come and learn and collaborate and meet some new, fun, interesting people who might be able to build your next mascot costume that you need in two weeks on the show that you're working on. So you do any you do any um, costumes for Carabana? <laughs> or the we, we do festival? have some members who work on uh, Carabana and Carnival type Whoa, costumes who see? also work in the film industry. So we do have some members who who, uh, who do incredible work like that. It's true. It's true. So um, we, one of the facets. I'm sorry. I was just going to continue by saying one of the big things that CAFCAT does is we've started an awards every year to acknowledge the people specifically in the costume industries. And this is where I was gonna pass it over to Joanna quickly because she is our awards chair and she has oh. been doing it since its inception and can tell you a little bit more about what makes the CAFCAD award so special compared to any other awards 
that you could possibly be part of. Go ahead. Yeah, so uh, in our now in our fifth year, the CAFCAT Awards came out of a desire to recognize the different types of work that we do. Uh, you know, a lot of award ceremonies like the Oscars have one costume design award. And yet oh. when you look at the five, you know, nominees, they're vastly different. And, uh, you know, the Canadian Screen Awards has one award for costume design in TV and one award for costume design in film. And I really wanted to, uh, I really wanted to realize that in period television, you know, when you have historical costumes, that is one type of genre. And then when you do uh, sci-fi or futuristic fantasy television, that is extremely different. So you can't necessarily put a show like Star Trek beside, you know, The Porter and say oh, okay. which one is better. They're 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 so vastly different. So we wanted to uh, we wanted to recognize that Canadian uh, costumers and designers and craftspeople had these various skills and were recognized against their peers in similar categories. And we also have put together uh, where I have not been able to find, and if anyone finds it and finds it to, uh, and lets let me know, is that uh, we're the only organization to have costume awards for our crafts people. So there's incredible wow. work that gets done in textile design. Like you look at like monster monster characters or futuristic and there's some incredible beautiful painting and embroidery that gets done and that's a textile award we have the illustration category which uh an illustrator works with the costume designer to come up with a concept for the character that's its own art form of being able to speak with you uh and then something called building like all of the people who actually build the costumes and cut them out. And based on this sketch, how do you come up with a finished costume? So we have these craft categories. And then also I wanted to recognize there's some really interesting stuff being done in web series. Mm -hmm. And then we have something called the, you know, indie film award. So what does somebody do with a really small budget? Cause people can be so creative and interesting. So um, I really wanted the awards to have a breadth to recognize all of these different types of people that we have. And again, not just have one award and say, this is it, this it's is it. It's just one, it's just one big blanket. Everybody's in the same blanket. Yeah. But and it's not. Canadian <laughs> costume, yes, because we're a Canadian costume awards event. We can focus on all of these various different uh, facets. Yeah. Well, this is something that's really great, but you know what? I, you know, here at Real Life Matters, people like to know your background. Your cultural background. <laughs> cultural background. And, I said, oh, and, and then you guys said, well, she didn't ask us. <laughs> you know, what I mean? you know, so uh, Lisa, what's your background? So we can tell, if you can tell everybody you know, because we got people from all over. All right, sounds good. I'm uh, born in Calgary, Alberta, raised okay. in uh, outskirts of Vancouver. I went to university in Los Angeles, got a degree, came back up here. Um, and his, if we go into like cultural background, I, um, take after a couple of my uh, my great Nana, who is Scottish, would Ooh. go to the theater and she would watch the musicals and then she would come home and from memory, she would reproduce the outfits for my mom's dolls. Wow. And then my Nana, who um, grew up in a on a farm in Winnipeg, was one of the only women in her entire town to leave home and go and work as a young lady in the 40s um, in Toronto. It was a big deal. She lived in a boarding house and she was very independent. Uh, she was a seamstress and she was one of those women who would take like two months to make a mini skirt because it had to be perfect. perfect. So she, she'd never get a job in the film inside industry. Inside out and it was... <laughs> Perfect. She'd never get a job in the film industry. No, no, no. she absolutely wouldn't. She but absolutely look what you're. But look what you're doing. Yeah. So, um, I definitely come by it honestly, <laughs> from both those facets, and those are both sides of the one was you know, the maternal. Yeah, but look what you're doing. You're working in. You're doing costume design. You're you're part of that, and, and look. But that came from your. You see your culture. Yes. It was instilled in you, even though maybe you were a young girl or you weren't around yet. But you yeah. see, but look, what, look where we change. are now. Yeah. <laughs> All true. right. And okay, are you Joanna? 
Uh, I'm a first generation Canadian. My parents are Polish. Uh, oh. They came here in the, you know, Woodstock year of 1969. So I was born in Toronto. I pretty much lived here my whole life. I have had the wonderful opportunity that I moved to Paris, France for a couple of years as a teenager, which really influenced uh, in the 90s, which really influenced my creativity and got involved in the, the school theater there. Um, and, and, and just it, very interesting, you know, that you mentioned it, Elisa. Uh, I guess the only thing I can think of culturally how I'm a costume designer today is that uh, when my grandmother was in Auschwitz, they had a very large, uh, there was a very large warehouse. And in this warehouse, it was all of the clothing that had been dumped out of the suitcases of the prisoners. Wow. And this warehouse was called, uh, was called Canada. And they called it Canada because they thought it was land of the riches. And my grandmother, who was like a really cute 18 year old girl, the soldiers would let her go in and put on whatever clothes she wanted. And her girlfriends would, and they'd wear different colored stockings. And apparently the German soldiers were not impressed with the different colored stocking business. But uh, yes, anyway, so I've always, I've always uh, thought about this warehouse of Canada being the land of the riches. Wow. Well, you see, inform her decision to move to Canada when she my grandmother there. didn't, but I think it may have influenced my mother's decision to choose Canada. Yes. Oh, because of the warehouse called Canada. So you say, well, well just in general, Canada was believed to be this mystical, mythical oh. land of riches and lots of space and lakes and trees and, you know, all of that. Well, what you do have, we do have all that. <laughs> But I see, see, and then look what we are doing today. You know, like, you know, that's why I ask people because, you know, this is, see how it all meshes together. Mm -hmm. And you got, look at, look, you guys are, you're in, you're in the film entry. You're, you're doing costumes for different people, different categories. And I like how you're saying that it's very specific. Like you don't have everybody in under the same blanket. So, mm -hmm. because, so. You know, people don't realize in the movie, all the dressing, everybody that all the things that are in the movie, it needs you guys behind it. Yes. Even contemporary, which is one thing that's really nice about the CapCat Awards is we have contemporary categories because very often contemporary just gets overlooked because it's contemporary. It's just jeans, Elisa. It's just, it's just like you're it's just shopping. Just jeans. Like, What's the big deal? But, you know, there's still <laughs> all the shopping. <laughs> Still takes a million people to put it together. Like you need Amazing. a team of people. You need to make the sneakers look like you've worn them for three weeks before they go on a body. You know, you still need to tailor everything. Well, how do you, what do you do with that? Do you have people running around with them, or what? How do you do? No, that? We have yeah, that's what we do. We hire right people down. to run around in the sneakers. <laughs> I have, I have actually run over leather jackets before with my tires. Yeah. Oh people. my god! <laughs> but we have a specific um, people called breakdown artists that using sandpaper and paint and dye will take something that is brand new and make it look like it is not mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or you make Which it is, look like it's in a different century like the 1800 or something right that too yes yeah so they add the dirt like um <laughs> there was a show God, it was like the late 90s early 2000s jamie fox was in it mm -hmm. and he played a cellist who was uh on hard times and was on the street. Do you guys remember the movie that I'm talking about? There was one more. I can't remember that, but I, is that the one where he was playing in the different countries or something? Or he stepped, he he was walking to different places and he sang too. I don't remember that he no, sang. I don't think so. But I remember paying a lot of attention to it because it was shortly after I'd started, and Jamie Fox is on camera and he is looking like a homeless person, and I remembered wondering to myself like how many thousands of dollars his outfit cost because he was he was jamie fox so he was probably wearing a three thousand dollar trench coat and wow. you know a six hundred dollar shirt and six hundred dollar pants and you know thousand dollar sneaks but then they had to break them down and make it look like he'd been living in them for the last 10 years and at the time when i was new in the industry i'm like oh my god this is such a waste of clothes <laughs> <laughs> So when your people yeah, make these clothes, that becomes, become <laughs> so when these people make the clothing and stuff, so when you get them, you guys go and purchase them and stuff like that, or or you make them, and then you have to kind of break them down according to whatever the movie 
That's is right. correct. Yeah. That is correct. Because they had we, a show, I watched The Misfits, and they had all these different clothes. And I said, I don't know what they had to do to get those clothes to look in that time. Yeah. So, you know, if if Joanna does a lot of, she does a lot of period stuff, if she's doing, oh, period, okay. especially like street urchins, period, mm -hmm. she'll be making it. But once it's made, in order for it to look right, somebody's got to make it look like a street urchin's been wearing it. And that's not it's that's not easy or fast to do. So I, I, they must be not. No. It is an art form all all on its yes. own. It's very beautiful. So you got to scout out your people that do that special special thing to make. I didn't even know there was people there. Like, see, this is what we're doing here. Real life matters. You know, we I would have never thought that they had somebody that did that. Yeah, it's I called breakdown just, artist or or ager dyer that type of thing. Yeah, no, there's a whole world. I mean, if you you know look at Bruce Willis in Die Hard, and he's got all of the. It looks like he's wearing a white shirt and black pants, and you wonder like he get he starts off clean and like really dirty and messed up at the end. Okay. They don't shoot that in order. So okay. someone has sat there and decided by scene by scene 26 he's this dirty and by scene 27 he's that dirty and then there's there's levels to it so so you know he may have 25 white shirts in various stages of dirtiness because they shoot it all out of order so some yeah. artist and someone has conceptualized sitting there and looking at the versions of how the shirt gets wow. clean to dirty and then those are hung up but they're also they you also have to be able to wash them Yes. <laughs> so they're all permanently painted and dyed and shredded and whatnot. And, uh, and you know, Elise and I have both been in situations where all of a sudden the wrong stage of shirt is being used because they don't care and they don't want to change it. And you're just so worried about the continuity because you've spent so much time, yes. you know, trying to make sure that it looks like you can't just do it there and we don't shoot it in order. So the or they they shoot somebody and the blood splatter hits in a place where it wasn't supposed to hit in. So now all oh. the that you've done with the blood splatter on this side, because of the way he got shot, he actually, it ended up on this side and you're like, Oh my God. <laughs> well, it must be hard on those, those longer dresses. Cause you probably got to make how many of those, you know, when the, in the, you know, when they were in the, the 1800s, when they were wearing those longer dresses and they go in the mud, that must be <laughs> Well, you just believe me, we, we do that on my show. I do a show called Murdoch Mysteries and we oh, have okay. muddy hems and it's it's just paint. It's permanent paint mixed in with a bit of oh, sawdust. Permanent and paint. Shock I thought it was and... actual dirt. <laughs> no, no, the, you only really use dirt if it happened right then and there and you're stuck okay. with real dirt. But the thing is, is you want to make it look the same the next time you need it. You don't want it to wash out. You don't want it to crumble all over the place. So uh, in many cases, it's it's paint mixed in with like as again sawdust and glue and yeah. you know oh. dip dyed and stuff like that. So you guys must come home sometimes if, if you have to. You guys go hands on, or you just let the other people do that. I'd I, nowadays I let the other people do it because my department <laughs> so big. But when I first started, um, and this is what happens on an indie film or smaller films is yes, you're the costume designer, but you also do everything else. So, you know, I would come home sometimes just covered in. Spray. Oh, your nails must be all, oh my gosh. I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even attempt anymore. I forget. <laughs> you just leave it. Let's leave it. That's right. And you too, Joanna, you just leave it. <laughs> you just leave your stuff or you don't do anything like that anymore. Uh, you no, know, it it depends. My on Murdoch, we have a we have a much smaller team, so sometimes I have to get in there, and sometimes your hands are dyed for a couple of days, and sometimes I remember to wear gloves. So it just it depends from moment to moment. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Usually, I remember to put gloves on after the stains have happened. That's usually how that works. Oh yes, that's true. My husband, who paints on Murdoch Mysteries, he has permanent paint on his under his fingernails uh, oh. for months until he stops working. He has permanent. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the, so that, um, you know, that stuff doesn't take the turpentine or whatever, doesn't take it off then. I guess if you wanted to try and actually scrub your hands every day. Yeah. Well, he, he just <laughs> says, you know what, we just leave it. it. You just have to, just you know, leave. and I think a lot of painters after a while are like, meh, these are my hands now. So. <laughs> Well, I guess it wouldn't work too much of it. Well, well, you're in show business, but I guess when you're fitting these people, you know, but you know, but, but it's good for you guys to tell people because a lot of people don't realize 
that you guys are very the, the movie can't even go on if you don't have if you guys don't have any costumes and they don't have all that stuff it's not about the acting it's about you guys you guys are in it too well but what's also really important is that our job is to support the actors and to support the character and support the storyline that and sometimes you want to make sure that it isn't all about the costumes that you you know the costumes frame and support the story and the characters i mean that's ultimately what we should be there for as much as we love making fancy beautiful you know Stating. exotic ensembles it's still important that you the audience doesn't get too distracted all the time because uh, you know, so you guys do costumes for animals too. The animals are yeah. that are in there. I've done a bunch of the Air Buddy movies, like okay. Space Buddies and Snow Buddies, and mm. I did uh, Chestnut Hero of Central Park, where I had to put a Great Dane in a in a costume. So yes, I've I've dressed lots of dogs, and I did Spy Mate way back in the day, where I wow. had a super spy chimpanzee who had twenty costume changes. And there were 20. three different chimpanzees because they were all different sizes because each chimpanzee could do a different thing. So you had your baby who could do the skateboarding and the snowboarding. Then you had the big guy who was the one they had do the lumbering. And then there was the middle guy who would do the acrobatic stuff. And they, so and they all to, needed to have matching outfits. And they all had to have matching outfits. Yeah. And I wasn't allowed to touch them because chimpanzees can rip your face off. So... You know, the only people who were allowed to touch them were their handlers. So I would have to do a fitting from, you know, 12 feet away. And I'd have to be like, can you turn them around? And can you pull that in? And can you put a safety pin right there for me, please? And Because they, they only trust the handler. They don't trust. Yeah. And how so they, how do they control them in the movie? That's really hard. But anyways. You know what? That was, that was their deal. You just. Yeah, I mean, like you couldn't look at them when they walked on set. They were like a an A list actor. Yeah, then no eye contact. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, what's more from you guys? What more can we expect to see? Because you guys got to come back. Because I, I know a lot of people learned a lot of stuff today. Like we, like wow. Yeah, hey, people, you're not watching those movies unless these people are involved. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have a website, CapCat. Um, our CAFCAP website. And if you go there, you can see all the fantastic um, shows that are currently nominated for this year's CAFCAT Awards. Most okay. of them you can watch on a, a number of streaming services. And, um, you know, you're supporting your own um, ca Canadian artists by doing that. And you might, uh, there's some like really great films that have been nominated. The Woman King was nominated because that is oh. one of our Canadian costume designers. Actually, it's won the international Gersha that Phillips. is correct. Yes, the winner wow. of our international category, the Woman King. Yes, Gersha yes. Phillips comes from Gersha Toronto. Phillips. Who's also um, responsible for some Star Trek. Um, the Porter is a really fantastic mm. series that, for some strange reason, did not get renewed by C. It got canceled by BET. Actually, I just read right before this interview. What was so. it? The Porter was. Was it called the Porter? Yeah, it was uh, it was about Afro Canadians, uh, you know, as porters in the 1920s on the trains oh. and their whole life. And they they shot that in Winnipeg. Heather Neal was the costume designer yeah. of that. It's really beautiful, okay. really beautiful. And it was just one season that airs on CBC, but uh, it was a BET. It got canceled. Yeah. Yes, yeah, just got canceled. But it also That's got 19 thing. Canadian Screen Award nominations yesterday. Yeah, yeah, it did. Yeah, I did. Okay. And then there's also some of the the smaller shows that that are the indie shows that you wouldn't normally hear of. So you can go and you can check out all the ones that are nominated, and then you know go watch them. And you can see all the nominations for our illustrators. And now I'm going to be looking at these costumes. Now we're going to watch the movies. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's what we no, do. Even though you're looking at it, but you're just looking at the character. But now I'm going to say, you know what? I talk to people that actually do these costumes. Now I'm going to be looking. You know, and I'm pretty sure everybody else that's watching this now is going to be like, oh, yeah, we're going to check it out, too. <laughs> yeah. And it's fun because then you can go and see sort of some of the illustrations from right. you know, some of these productions and then go watch the show and go, oh, I see that. Or mm -hmm. some of the textile artists, because we've got some before and after photos in right. on the website for these people who've been nominated. So you can check that out as well. So it kind of gives you a little glimpse to behind the scenes supporting Canadian artists, which is always awesome. And then of course we have a bunch of courses. Like you can take some, um, we do a bunch of Zoom courses, but we also have a um, 
courses on there that you can rent that have been previously done that we've recorded and you can rent and watch at your leisure. So there's lots of stuff on the CAFCAD website just to sort of check it out and, and see what we're all about. And, you know, for people who are maybe considering careers in the textile arts or in film and don't know that much about all the opportunities available to them in the costuming industry because there is so much so many like different jobs in our so department. many different jobs and we're always needing more people who can do all of those jobs that it's you know, a good some people always want to be in the front line but you know it's also to it, it's important sometimes in the back of the scenes too as we're seeing here today mm -hmm. With you guys, you know, you're in the back of the scene, but it's important because those people have to look good and they got to, and, and it makes the movie, you know, open up or whichever you have to do. Yeah. And behind us, there's a whole other set of back of the scenes. We wouldn't be able to do what we do if we didn't have huge teams to help us. Some shows have bigger teams than others. Mm -hmm. um, yes. you know, like I said, back in the indie days, you know, Joanna, too, you've done tons of indies. It's like you and one other person and you're trying yeah. to put this whole movie together. But, you know, when you do the big streaming um, television series, it's it's like a little mini costume village going on. Wow. So yeah. you guys' mind, so do you, do you sleep good at night? Because you guys... No. <laughs> Depends on the show. <laughs> Depends how well the show is going. Some yeah. shows, everybody's very happy with what everyone's wearing. Okay. And it all seems to be easygoing, and somehow they, you know, they shoot it without any problems. Mm -hmm. uh, and then some shows, there are, you know, a lot of people are not confident about whatever the costumes are because they're just not confident about the show in general, or they're not confident about their own abilities. And that can, there could be a whole fascinating range of politics combinations with egos and money and and you never know what you're going to get into until you're in it yeah. so it, it can be it can be extremely rewarding when you get to see everything and how well it looks together with the lighting and the music and the the cushions on the couch and how it all like comes together and how really supports the character and then there's other times when you're like I've had way too much of the politics on this show or the you know, not having enough <laughs> workspace or I don't have enough yeah. crew or whatever. So, or, and you can have all of that on one, sh on the same show as well. Yeah. And what I love about my job is it's a, it's like a chaos that I, every day there's going to be something new. You don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. No two days are the same ever, ever, ever. <laughs> it's like chaos. I like that one. <laughs> All right. So what's, so you guys have got things in the works. I guess you always have stuff in the works going on. Always, always. There's new courses. March is full of new courses. We do the award ceremony okay. right at the beginning of March. And then after that, it's next Sunday courses. Hmm? Next Sunday, nine yeah. days until the Calf Cat Awards. Yeah. Uh, and then we do a magazine that comes out every year. Um, we've been doing it virtually since COVID. It's beautiful, bespoke. It has, and you can go online and you can look at back issues and it's it's gorgeous. And we do virtual exhibits that we've done online so that you can go in and look at past work of a myriad of our members. Um, so there's always something new and happening on the website and there's always something new and happening that we're doing. Things slowed up in person. Things slowed up obviously with COVID as everything did, but our yeah. education online really ramped up at that point in time. And um, all, though we're not doing as many courses as we did, especially that first year, we still, we've, we've kept that up. And like I said, we have the learning studios where you can go and you can rent past courses and watch them. And um, I highly recommend doing that, especially if you're interested in, in this, going in this direction. So, what, so, so are you looking like for fashion design students or artistic people? Or like yeah, who what, might what, want to break into the costume industry? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So that's the, yeah, because that's the cat. Because I know that sometimes oh, I, I do fashion. Well, you could do your friend, you know, but this is a different type of thing. But you know, you guys are, are hands on, which I'm catching from this here. Yes. So it's like, and you know, and probably you know, from this episode, a lot of people really now know what you guys do and what what it is you know it's like, oh that's a something award no it's not it's more than that this they need you guys need to function before all the movies come out right you know and people and that's a very it goes hand in like this yeah without yeah. no costumes there's no movie 
No. And <laughs> again, even with contemporary, which is, you know, the majority of everything that you see, the, the myriad of fittings that happen happen uh, to come up with that one outfit that ends up on camera and then the alterations that happen nobody it's 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 part of the fashion industry it's it's part of you know the beauty industry it's that secret nobody walks into stuff off the rack and looks that good without help from somebody mm -hmm. namely mm -hmm. us pinning them and <laughs> getting cooler cool to fit them. so right. you know there's a lot of work uh, we had three fittings today and today was a small day and it's wow two o'clock here um and wow. we only had three fittings i think we've had about 40 fittings this week so far just to start 40. this new episode. wow and i mean so help me todd right now so it's just you know contemporary mother and well, son you guys you could see the passion that you guys this is you this is what you guys like to do you can see it in your face you can see it in what you do you, you know you have to really like what you do to be in what you're doing because it's a and a lot of adjustments you got it you got to kind of move the flow it's a lot of crap you know oh gosh the, the piece fell off or something then you gotta <laughs> you gotta get up and, and put these back, back on yeah yeah and then you gotta get up the next day and do it all over again <laughs> so what what, it, what i really love <laughs> sorry all right so are there any yeah go ahead Go ahead. I just wanted to say, you know, you were talking about the passion, D Boss, and I wanted to say that that uh, that's what the CAFCAD Awards uh, supports and celebrates is this this incredible passion and all these really incredible talents that we have. Um, it's a wonderful evening for people to get together, to network, to celebrate one another. Uh, there are still tickets on sale, actually, and the general public can come. Or if anyone wants to get into costume, oh, okay. it's a fantastic opportunity to see what it what 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 there is out there, what it is we're celebrating. So if you're in the Toronto in Toronto, the Toronto area next Sunday, March 5th. It's at the Aga Khan Museum. Uh, it's a great party. It's a great stage show that's full of all sorts of costume jokes and humor and, you know, in jokes and stuff like that. Um, I've uh, some incredible relationships, professional relationships have been created by people meeting each other on the red carpet there. So there still are tickets available if people are willing really want to go to eventbrite.ca and type in CAFTCAD, C-A-F-T-C-A-D. The CAFCAD Awards will come up, so people can still join the gala. Uh, it's a, a, an awesome opportunity to dress up and be on the red carpet and wear whatever it is that you've never dared to wear before. We're like, you know, we're like, we want to call ourselves like the low budget Canadian Met Gala. So <laughs> people can come and be part of the event, and as I said, dress up, meet their meet uh, meet other people in the industry, and really enjoy the show all right wow so are there any shout outs you want to give um um elisa and then joanna you want to y'all can go first any shout outs uh well come to the calf cat awards check out our website and watch so help me todd on cbs on thursday nights at 9 p.m and don't forget to watch the entirety of firefly lane season <laughs> three is going to be coming out in april on netflix Oh, good. I'm oh, yeah. Those are you. my shout outs. <laughs> Very nice. Well, my shout out is I'm so excited about our hosts for the CAFCAT Awards, which is Peter Callahan and uh, Samora Smallwood, who are like devastatingly dashing and uh, very funny so i'm really excited to see what they're doing we have a, a great lineup of very funny presenters uh various actors in the from the toronto area and you know since you can't watch the porter anymore you're gonna have to go back to murdoch mysteries so wow. we know that that screens everywhere all the time in the entire world and we're just finished finishing season 16 and uh yeah uh, fingers crossed for season 17. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, it's been a pleasure having you guys on here, you know, and, and explaining to people because probably a lot of people didn't really understand maybe what you guys did or do or what the organ. But now everybody else, 12 million people are going to understand <laughs> now what you do. And, you know, and you're actually speaking to the from you're getting it all information from the horse's mouth. And I mm -hmm. said plural, you know, they both you know, know what they're doing. So, you know, check out the website. And just could you just say the website clerk um, again? So if any for all your updates and all the stuff that's going on, it's just www.caftcad, 
C-A-F-T-C-A-D.com. All right. So, you know, this concludes us, but you guys got to come back again. I want you guys to welcome you guys, you know, just don't, you know, come on because people are going to be asking like, you know, what did the, you know, are these guys coming back on again? Yes, <laughs> because you guys gave a lot, of, a lot of education and a lot of information you gave to people because a, a lot, a lot of people, some things I didn't even know what they did in the background. So now everybody's fully aware of what you do and what, and then they're going to come out. And, you know, and now you're giving awards and stuff. You've been giving out awards. It's the fifth time. So people are going to be now, you know, hey, you guys get out there. They're calling uh, fashion designers, all kinds of stuff. So, you know, you guys go check out the website. You know, you, you maybe not be able to speak to um, Alisa and Johanna, but, you know, somebody will reach out to you guys there. And so you can be a part of this um, wonderful organization that's doing all these wonderful things in the film industry. So anyways, I do want to thank you again and everybody. So good night and bye for now. All right. Thank you, D-Boss. Yes, thank you.